Hi guys, back with another video. So a while back, I made a video titled How to Start Filming Your Own Hunts. And in that video, I went over some of the equipment I used, some of the different cameras, talked a little bit about how I used them. And I think, it, you know, I think a lot of people liked it because it gave them an idea how to start. But since that video, I've got quite a few more cameras. So what I want to do was talk about each of the cameras that I use now to make my videos. Talk a little bit about how I use them. You know, maybe give some sample footage from some of the cameras. Talk about some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like. So what can we start with? How about we'll start with this one right here. It's not up here where you can see it. The shot cam. You guys have been watching my videos. You've probably noticed this the last year. I've used this on everything. Turkey hunts, pheasant hunts, dog hunts, duck hunts, goose hunts. Got quite a bit of footage with this camera. I have to say, I really like it. Gets good footage, slows it down in slow motion, and films in 100 frames per second. So, makes adds a lot to the videos. There is a drawback to this camera. That is, you don't save the footage unless you pull the trigger. The camera feels recoil, and that's what makes it save whatever you filmed. So let's say a duck flies over, you don't pull the trigger, you don't have footage. It just doesn't save it. It only saves after you pull the trigger. But I like the camera, I use it a lot, and you'll be seeing a lot more of it in the future. With that being said, I also have a Tacticam. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't used this that much. I just like the shot cam better, but the Tacticam does have an advantage. And that advantage is, is when you record, you don't have to shoot to save the footage. You either stop, you start recording, and then you stop recording. So if you, let's say a turkey's coming in, you start recording, it comes in, it struts around, and it leaves, you don't shoot it. You still have the footage. You still can keep the footage and use it in a video. You don't have that with the shot cam. You have to pull the trigger to make it save the footage. So I do like the cat tactic cam for that reason, but I just don't use it a lot. I may be using it in the future. I may be uh, using it on my new turkey gun, but I might be using a different camera. I come up with a different idea and I might be trying that. So the next camera. The next camera is a Sony Handycam. This is the CX220. This is one of the first cameras I got when I started my channel. I use this thing a lot. Got a lot of squirrel hunting footage with it. Used it for deer, archery hunting. Got a lot of footage with it. And I do like the camera, but I actually have a problem with it now. The viewfinder, the picture, when you open it up, it, the picture is just frozen. It's like in static and it's frozen, so you can't use the viewfinder. You can angle, you can twist this a certain way, and then you can actually see, you know, through the viewfinder. But it doesn't, it doesn't work right anymore, so I haven't used this camera in a while. So the next camera, this is a Canon. HFG 30. I've used this camera quite a bit for archery season. I used it during turkey season, dove season. I've used this thing a lot. It gets some really good footage. It has a 20 power zoom, so you can zoom right in on stuff. I've taken it when I go see the elk, get some of the elk footage. Got a lot of good footage out of this camera. My complaint about this camera is it's a little bit bulky. I mean, it's, it's not heavy. You wouldn't think it was heavy, but it's got some weight to it. When you're carrying a whole bunch of stuff, let's say turkey hunting, you got a decoy, you got your gun, you got some gear. Just adding the camera, and you have to be careful with it. You can't just be banging it around. You want to be careful. So it does, it is kind of inconvenient to take it. So I, I like the camera. It's just the, just it's bigger, has a lot of weight to it. So the next camera. This is a Sony Handycam CX240. It's a little bit different model than the other one. The battery is inside, so I don't have to worry about the battery falling off. I like the camera. I'm 
I'm not sure what the zoom was on it. It's like a 32 power optical zoom, something like that. It zooms in quite a bit. It does get a little bit wobbly. I've used this recently on my video, my turkey project, when I zoomed in on the target. I still use this camera quite a bit. It's good if you're going to do, you know, an interview. You can turn the lens around. You can see yourself, you know, talk to yourself in the camera. you got everything framed right. And it still has the zoom capability to zoom in on something at a distance. Good camera. I do like it. The next camera. GoPro Hero 7 Black. Just got this camera last year. You've seen a lot of footage with this thing over the last year. I've used this. Usually I strap it to my head. It's on a strap. This is one of the veal clips. I may be using it. I may try it like this in the future. A little bit heavy up there. But I'm using a strap to my hat. And also used it on a backpack for some of the dove hunting. And some of the fishing videos. It's voice activated pretty cool that you could uh, just say GoPro start recording and the thing pops on and starts recording. Very convenient. You don't have to fumble with it. And I have to say I'd highly recommend this camera. If you start, uh, if you have a YouTube channel and you want something that has good audio, this thing has great audio. There's no external mic. Any of the footage you've seen, there's no mic with it. Very clear, sharp images. It's a good camera. But I use this thing quite a bit over the last year. One of the biggest complaints you hear about using a GoPro to make hunting and fishing videos is the wide angle lens. The wide angle lens makes your subject appear farther away. So the GoPros are best used for close range. But GoPros have many other uses when making hunting and fishing videos, namely B-roll footage. I also use GoPros to do my interviews when I'm talking about what I'm, what's about to take place or anything I want to comment on during the video. Alright, today is the first day of Pennsylvania's early duck season. You can add a lot of B-roll footage with a GoPro. You could use time lapse. You can use any kind of footage that adds or enhances the rest of the video. This camera is a GoPro knockoff. It's called an Activon CX. I don't use it a lot for anything. It has a pretty decent image. Not as good as the GoPros, but it does have a pretty decent image. I mostly use this camera mounted to my fishing net when I land a fish. You see the, the footage that this thing puts out. This is the camera that's being used. These things aren't very expensive. I believe they're about 50 bucks. Pretty decent camera, and they do have really good audio, especially compared to the older GoPros. This thing has better audio. Not quite the sharp image, but good audio. And this camera here. This is the first GoPro I got. I got it in a different case. Just got this case for it. This is the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black. It came with the remote use this remote quite a bit comes in pretty handy but for the fishing videos oh, put this around my neck I used it in dove hunting videos in the past mounted on a backpack you've probably seen me wearing this has the camera mounted behind me cameras mounted up here gives you the over the shoulder look for you know when you're fishing when you're hunting it looks like somebody's standing right behind you with the camera I've also used the Hero 7 like that this past year too. But there is a difference with the image. I have to go over this a little bit. The Hero 7 has a different kind of stabilizer. I don't know what's different about it. But it's not very good if you're walking because it stabilizes the, like the image in front of you, the horizon. But it makes it look jumpy and jittery you know, when your head's bobbing in and out of the picture. I really didn't like that. So I think the older GoPro did a better job when it comes to that for that using it that way. But other than that, I don't know. Other than that one thing, that's the only complaint with the GoPro 7. But it's not really a complaint because it does have a better image stabilizer. Hard to explain all that. So anyways, this 3 Plus, what's one of the drawbacks with it? Is the audio. It's not near in the league as the newer 
seven and eight GoPros. Audio is not very good, so I got a little external mic, and I don't think it really even helps that much with the external mic. But I haven't used this lately since I got the seven, but it's still a pretty decent camera. It's one of the cameras in my arsenal, and I've used it quite a bit for dove hunting and trout fishing. So another camera would be my, actually my phone. This is an old Samsung uh, Galaxy S5. I've only used it a couple times. I actually used it in archery season to get a little bit of footage. I like that phone cover. It's got uh, turkey feathers. That's in my store. Down in the description it says the Windwalker gear, official Windwalker gear. I have different phone covers like that, and this is one of them with the turkey feathers. I actually got them plugged into the wall, recharging. I'm actually uploading a video to YouTube right now through my phone. So those are the cameras. I use, I mean, I like them all. I use them quite a bit. But there is one more camera I, that I added to my arsenal, and that's the one you're seeing me on right now. It's the GoPro Hero 8 Black. Just got it the other day, messing around with it. And you haven't seen any videos with it yet. Actually, the one I'm uploading right now, you'll see. But you'll be seeing that in the future. That's some pretty, uh, pretty cool features on it that I might be using in the videos. So I'm not sure if I covered everything. I think I did. But that's it, guys. That's for that's my camera arsenal. I appreciate you guys tagging along and watching my videos. I'll see you on the next one.